All right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly the competition, but I feel kind of like I am introducing Salon again after Salon was introduced three years ago by Ananda Gunawardena from um, Carnegie Mellon. So I don't know how many of you all were here back when he presented that at the very first blended learning conference. Um, but I, this tells you just a warning how slow I am and how I'm not an early adopter. And that was a long time ago, and now here I am finally using it and presenting here. But it takes me a little while to get, get going with things. Anyway, I'm from another A college, Albright College, um, just up the road roughly in Reading, Pennsylvania. And I got very excited about Salon, uh, which is an open source um, um, offering from Carnegie Mellon back, way back when. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what, uh, what it is, hopefully show it to you a little bit, um, and talk to you about my experience in using it in my senior seminar um, with psychology students. So it's open source software from Carnegie Mellon. Can you speak a little louder? Yes, I'm sorry. You. Oh. Uh, if you're behind the podium, the uh, microphone will activate, and if you want to wander, just project. What a choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's uh, an open source software, and it's for use with um, course materials, uh, those already written for reading assignments or being written, papers, um, and videos. Um, I had promised to talk about videos, but I'm going to renege on that promise. Um, so it's designed to promote social learning, generally. And it's supposed to increase engagement with students, and it's supposed to help with just-in-time teaching. So um, how does it do all those things? Or how did I use it to do all those things? Um, so the instructor creates the salon, uh, and students are, enroll are enrolled or can enroll. So you can, you can do that. They can either be assaulted with another task, or you can do it for them. So you have that choice. Um, the instructor puts course materials up on Salon for reading or viewing, um, and students comment on materials, and hopefully the comments are done prior to coming to class. <laughs> so my, my hope with this was to get my seniors uh, to actually read the materials. It's a very low-level goal. Um, the materials that they were being asked to read were original empirical reports, journal articles, hard stuff at the top end of difficulty for them. Um, and they, they were supposed to be coming into class ready to discuss. And I've been doing this class for, in various forms for about 17 years. And I'm really quite bored with, with kicking them into reading and getting them to actually read the materials before class, to have a good discussion instead of flipping through and pretending. Um, <laughs> they, they're very good at pretending when they're seniors. And spring semester, senior year, they're, they're awesomely good at pretending um, that they've read the material. So really, I had some pretty, just some basic low-level goals um, that weren't even at the levels of bloom. It was just, please read. <laughs> please give me evidence that you've read. Um, so I get one of the questions you might be asking when listening to the two of us is, what's the, what's the difference here between what we all, tools we already have? Why should you be bothering with any one of these tools? Um, because, you know, we can do wikis, we can do Google Docs. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for social learning that doesn't have to happen using yet another tool that you have to learn how to use. So I think both of us are trying to address the issue of why should you bother with yet another tool, uh, even as you're excited like kids in a toy store. Um, you can, so students can see other students' comments. Students can comment on other students' comments, which is kind of what you want. Um, the instructor can see who has read or who has not. All of this is kind of so far the same. Um, so where's the difference? Why should you bother? Um, and what, was, what, was, what got me going on this that made me um, willing to do this? And it was in the analytics that Salon offers and that uh, um, the MIT program offers as well, figuring out uh, that you, as the instructor, can get detailed reports on who, what, when, and where of the student activity. So you can, you can it makes um, it easier for you to know who's doing what, who's read the material ahead of time, and you can count. You can count things. Um, which also, in terms of grading participation, and in my class it was probably 20% of their final grade was participation. 
not just showing up, they got some points for that too. Um, and it met three days a week for a whole semester, so if you ever experienced the joy of trying to go back and count who participated and who, you know, counting that in some way, Solon does that for you. Um, so it, it, it can let you look at the short term, the long term, short term for prodding people saying, hey, what are you doing? You're not, you know, you're not, you're not engaged. Um, and it can let you do the long term, that awful final grading. I'm here happy, relaxed today because I had to turn and see my grades on Tuesday and I had to do all that counting and Salon did that for me. Um, so you can see who's commenting, how often they're doing this and you also get um, what we refer to as hot spots. You get an idea of where are they interested right at the point where you're coming into that classroom wanting to talk. So you as the instructor get an idea about hot spots and, and who is not understanding something. It lets you focus your explanation. So just in time teaching, um, it, it works pretty well for that. Um, so you can, you can, I'm getting ahead of myself, I always do this. Um, it it's, it's just makes it so much easier in a whole article that can either be four pages from science and nature or six, you know, 50 pages from child development makes it easier to figure out where do you want to talk, um, what do they want to talk about, what did they miss, what do you want them to talk about. So you get to do that back and forth very, very easily um, from an instructor's point of view. <clears throat> this is my, you know, the teacup in the first slide. This is the piling up of dirty dishes. I was trying to, you know, but, you know but things get, some things get harder. Uh, it can make life harder too. So I know it's one more piece of software for you and the students to learn to navigate. It's one more place that you have to monitor. It's one more system that can, of course, go down. It didn't that often. I was pleased to find out. It didn't go down that often. Um, so my experiences with this uh, software, good and not so good, mostly good, I would say. So again, it was a senior capstone seminar. Um, it was on infant cognition. So it's a brand new class for me. I'm not sure why I punish myself this way. Do a brand new class with materials that you've only kind of re read maybe back when you were a graduate student um, a long time ago. Um, about a topic that you really, really want the students to know about. Infants actually know something. That was a big theme of the course. Uh, yes, they actually know something. And show them and convince them that they actually know something. Um, all based on empirical articles, pretty much. We had a brief couple of book chapters at the very beginning. but So mostly what I was dealing with is PDFs, double column PDFs, which it turns out is a bit of a headache for Salon. Um, so the primary source, empirical journal articles, the students read three articles a week, and the class met Monday, Wednesday, Friday for 50 minutes, and in the afternoon, so they'd gotten over lunch. Um, they were not particularly sleepy. Um, and each student was required to lead the discussion once, which becomes important in terms of the technology. They needed, they needed to be able to use the technology in class. Um, so unlike Andrew, I was having this up on the screen and available and looking at it while we, were, while we were talking and looking at the primary paper in our hands. It was, it was sometimes crazy. Um, so, so my course, I want to show you here we go with the dangerous part. I always was holding my breath at this point. Um, and I'm going to stay behind the podium for this part. This is what the interface looks like, classroom salon. And here is my infant cognition seminar. And here's where I was <laughs> a long time ago with Bryn Mawr College um, when they were teaching us about this. Um, and so the, the, it, it's pretty overwhelming in terms of a visual, visual look at it. Um, but this is a go into my salon, and these are my participants with all their silly little avatars. I didn't get a chance to make this anonymous, but so I don't think they would be embarrassed. Um, this is the mechanism for sharing it. You give that link to anybody, uh, send it to them by email, and they click and they join. You've asked them. You have to invite, and you have they have to accept the invitation. You have to say okay. Um, so most of what I had for them was PDFs. I did have a, a salon does let you post videos and they can annotate videos, which is just very, very powerful. It turned out to be not so much what I was going to spend my time on in class. But I put all the documents up into 
um, for, um, on, onto Salon. I have to do a little bit of tedious folder managing, folder creating, and folder organizing. It was worth it in the end for having week by week materials for the students. So if they were going into, this was my favorite, um, favorite week, the very end, it's what got me inspired, that babies judge right from wrong. This is the stuff coming out of Paul Bloom's lab that they, they really don't like puppets that are mean and nasty and they prefer puppets that are helpful and sharing. It's just, <laughs> and they like puppets that are like them. So if you like goldfish, I like you too. If you like broccoli, I don't like you. It was wonderful, wonderful infant papers and very inspiring because they also had videos. So in that folder, um, this is what a student would see. They would see a paper. And so this was the, let's see, they click on the, on the document. Okay, this is, this, is, this is the way things end up looking. Um, and here we see one of, the, one of the struggles I had with the two, column, the two column format. When a student is trying to comment on this, so there's the, it suddenly turns into the annotation tool. You can see the mouse changing format there. And if you click on that, um, you're gonna get, it goes across the entire two column document. Right? So, so that was one of the first technical discoveries I had that was going to give me a headache. And we solved it very, very simply by saying, start your comment with an R or an L. Mm -hmm. It was a simple solution, but I would really prefer to have a smaller grabber on the mouse cue. And one of my, one of my computer students says, if they just would do this, then it would be fixed. So we have an email going back to um, Carnegie Mellon. So right and left fix that problem. But um, it, it, it's it's not a problem when you're loading a Word document that is just a single column. It works very nicely for that. So when, I'm, when, I'm, when students go in and see the document, they are going to click and comment, and it shows up that Allison Peters, lovely student, commented, um, and it's located next to the text. Now, you can separate the comments from the text in a couple of different ways, but when you are trying to use this in class, on a screen, talking with your students while they're flipping through papers. There's, you know, you want to have a discussion that's not just them reading another screen with you saying, oh, look, Allison commented, and someone commented, and oh, you liked my comment, you upvoted it. I mean, that's all important for them. They get engaged socially with each other because they can read each other's comments and reply to them and upvote them. I guess I, I, it took me a while to understand why they like that so much, but I'm also new to the Twitter world. So, <laughs> um, so they can, you can, while you're trying to do this complicated thing, sitting in a circle of 16 students and discovering finally that your wireless mouse will work from across the room, that you can scroll through with them and direct them to comments and talk about the comments. Um, you really have to feel, you feel like kind of an octopus in both in brain power and in and physicality. Um, so you have to watch out for, your, for, your, for your, your classroom management. But a couple of the things that are really nice. So Allison's comment uh, came in, um, this is just lots of different scroll bars that you have to keep track of. And I can see them nicely on this screen. It's, it's, it's kind of a lovely thing. It's not always so clear when you're dealing with a projector in a classroom that changes your um, ratios and changes the coloring and changes. So watch out for that. You need to be prepared for that. But generally, if you've got a comment that's been posted in time order, they're not in document order, but you can click and see the context of where was Katie, where was that post. So you can go immediately to where it was the hot pink is Katie. The yellow just tells you everybody else's posting areas, so you can find out how many people generally were at that location in a kind of a raw color, color version way. So that's, that's and, and Kate, here's, here's one Katie remembered left. So there's left. So she's talking about in something in the methods um, and, and makes a comment on that. There's the upvoting link and the reply link. The students didn't like that replies went above the comment, so we're talking to Ananda about that as well. Put the replies below where they belong. Mm -hmm. You know, don't make people read left to right, upside down, and backwards. You know, follow the conventions. So they'll hear about that. Um, so the that is what a document ends up looking like, and you can go all the way through. And the students were quite active. They were quite active because they actually, as we'll see, they they liked the tool. 
Um, and I was just overjoyed that they liked the tool. Um, they, they see that, they see the comments, they post and reply, and I had all 16 of them commenting. They were all expected to do something. Even if it was just one comment per article, they were expected to kind of show up. Um, they were also expected to be present in class, and I hoped that they would actually speak in class. But one of the reasons I've been looking for these alternatives, looking for um, ways of using technology this, this way, was to get them to do the work outside of class and to have a voice outside of class if they are shy, so that they could actually do good comment and good posting um, and not have to speak up. Because even in a class of 16, there are people who just will, they just don't find their footing to speak. They're just not going to do that, no matter what you do. 20% of their grade. I've had students remain completely silent with no salon as an opportunity. So my expectations were very fuzzy. I was not clear because I didn't actually know what, my, what counted as participation. They kept saying, you know, how many comments do you want us to make? I said, just talk about what you're interested in. Do something. Um, so I was deliberately vague, but I had 16 students who were expected to do something. So we had quite a lot of activity. And as you might expect, if you were going to do the work of going in and grading this for high-level, low-level commentary, you'd find most of it pretty low-level. Um, you know, why did they only have 18 babies in this study? Um, funny that you have so many fussy babies. I mean, we got a lot of kind of free-form comments. I didn't set a threshold of, of intellect for their comments. I simply wanted them to use it. Um, analytics, what do you get? So for this... Um, This is just showing it for that one paper, okay, and comment activity. But you can get comments by users, okay, um, for this paper. So there's Amanda. She's one of my top, top uh, commenters. Kara was one of my most intellectual commenters. Um, Allison right behind them. So you can, you can look at what they're doing. You can count what they're doing, and that's just for that one paper if you wanted to know. Um, Where's the threads? Pardon me? The threads, what does that mean? You can follow through if they responded, if they, if they actually um, talked to each other. So if you were looking for a way of judging, were you interacting? If this were a completely online course, you could get a very nice measure of of that kind of interaction. Now here's where you find out how bad I am. I'm going to get lost and I'm going to try to get back to where I want to be. Because what I'd like to show you is the overall analytics that got me to grading, just so you can know what you're up against. So PDF comments, I, I was not using text and I was not using video so much, but PDF comments will get you things that look like this. So there's our activity for the entire um, semester. Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. You see these lovely three-day chunks of Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and that's overall. That's the whole class. And if you want to look for a person, you can find a person relative to the whole class. <laughs> nice. And now what you see about Kara is that she was every Every day on it, every day on it. She commented everything, and she commented at a pretty high level in terms of numbers, if you have to go read it to find out about content. But she was, she was there. Um, you can do it individually by student. Uh, here's a student who was refusing. Um, I hate to call him out on this, but he's far away right now. He's, that is a low-level participant. Now, that's all visual. So that's not getting you the numbers. All of this you can get exported to an Excel file. So you can take it all, all back to numbers that you can see amounts. Yeah? Students can't see their data. No, 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 no. Every now and then, it doesn't hurt to give them a little look at it quickly. Do you see that? And say, yes, I see that. I don't want to threaten them, but I want them to know that it's eminently countable. And that, you know, counting is not the only thing. But but so you can you can imagine that you can do that by person. You can also do it by document. 
Um, and you can do many, many, many more. I can tell that some of you are doing itching more sophisticated things that I did not do. My use of this was incredibly simple, low level stuff. But it's a very powerful tool with, with some, some limitations um, that I was willing to get over. So all of that's great um, in terms of technology and so on. And that gives you um, an idea of what, a little bit about the tool for those of you who have not heard about it before. So the positives, student participation was just way higher than it's ever been for any of my senior seminars during class. And of course, outside of class on salon. During class, we were, they were, they were, they were a different bunch of students. And I, I, I think they felt more confident, more um, um, ready to talk, more interested. I, 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 yeah. it, was, it was a better, better experience for me. I did not feel like I was pulling teeth every time I walked into that room, which was, which was terrific. Um, so I could see who had read ahead. The students get peer pressure. They were yakking with each other about, oh, well, you said blah, blah, blah. And they were talking, you know, joking with each other about who took up all the space um, or who, who, who didn't say anything at all. So they were actively talking about that in the class. Um, they also gave each other a bit of peer pressure. It's like, what are all of you doing only commenting the hour before class? You know, come on. Could you do it a little bit sooner so we could be ready? That was from the people who were in charge of leading the discussion. Um, the, 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 they love the upvoting and replying. The one thing I didn't show you was that they, as an instructor, you can guide things to some extent with pre-made tags. So you can force them to use tags in their comments. So you can mark documents saying, please talk about this. Um, you could, for my purposes, you could say, find the independent variable. I say, mark the independent variable. And everybody runs and takes the tag and marks the independent variable or the dependent variable. Uh, so depending on what kind of materials you have, your pre-made tags that you can go mark things with can really give a student who doesn't want to type their own comments something to do to get them going and to answer a question. And to see, of course, at senior level, they still don't understand independent, dependent variable. Um, so so they, could, they could do a lot of kind of simplistic commenting if, if you set those tags up. Not so positives. Uh, I've already talked about a bit of them. They were primarily tech, and I was glad to have a, a upper level computer student in the class with me who just laughed every time I couldn't adjust the size of the screen and couldn't get. Sometimes, depending on your screen format, the comments would vanish to the bottom of the document and not be running alongside, and I had to learn how to adjust aspect and not mess with my computer before class anytime. So screen projection changes the size. You can tell that color would be important. Screen projection changes color, and if you're in trifocals and you're trying to look at your screen and look up over your head um, and see that you're in the right place, it takes a while for you to get used to that. Um, and the color matters for finding the comment, finding the, the one you're looking for. Um, and I already mentioned the PDF problem. And they claim they're working on that. So I get a lot of email from Ananda, and it's wonderful, and says, this is coming. This is coming soon. Uh, so we'll look forward to that. That was my LR problem solved. Um, so, there are features that you can use that I did not use, um, but I might. I could get, I could do this someday. I could decide that they don't get to see each other's comments until a certain point in time. I could set deadlines on when they can comment. There's an awful lot that you can control about this so that students will try to answer a question before they've seen everybody else's stuff, and then at a certain point you open it up again. I didn't do any of that because we were meeting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I never knew when they were going to actually go and look. And I didn't feel empowered enough to tell them what to do. My limits would have been very different from theirs. I go to bed at 9.30. <laughs> so I didn't do much of that, but you can. It's, it's, it can be very nice, especially if you're meeting once a week. You could use that in a very, very powerful way to get them to say something and then see what others are saying. It's more work for you. I'm always about less work for me. I, I don't want more work. I'm not looking for more work. I'm looking for more interesting times. Um, so at the very end, I, I, I faked it. I said, you know, I, I, I teach psychology. I know about designing surveys. So I, I, I made up a 27 question evaluation as I was just thinking about, well, what do I want to know? I think they liked it. What do I want to know? So I just, as I was making up, so I was completely disorganized. My colleagues would be appalled. 
at my at my assertion that I measured liking or anything having to do with participation. But 27 questions with Likert scales 1 to 5, indicating strongly agreeing to strongly disagreeing, all reverse scored so that they, uh, a 1 meant good. So that's all you need to know is that 1 means really good, strongly agree. They were just happy. Um, so generally four areas, kind of an overall assessment, their things that indicated their participation, things that indicated they thought they had learned, um, things that indicated kind of a, a social factor that they liked, um, and the technical aspects of salon. Um, and so these were some sample questions of the 27. I didn't think you had to read that 27. Overall, I enjoyed the use of salon for this class. The use of salon is more time consuming than helpful. That would be a reverse score one. Um, I like getting other students' reactions to my posts. I like seeing what other students posted to salon. I was a regular contributor on salon. That was my attempt to get them to actually figure out what does regular mean? And, and were, they, were they just deluding themselves? Because some of them were. Um, because of salon, I think I was more active in class than I would have been otherwise. Salon is difficult to figure out how to use, another reverse score. Use of salon increased my critical thinking about the articles. It's all good. <laughs> That's Sally Field. Um, so every, every, all the individual items were scored at either um, somewhere close to strongly agree or agree. I like it, a one or a two. Um, all the summarized means, putting things together, doing math, um, putting, grouping them together, all but below three. They pretty much liked it. Um, it changed my perception of what went on during the in-class discussion. Um, they read the material prior to class compared to earlier years. It was good. This is very different from my last year report. It was wonderful. So their ratings, um, they're all good. Um, and they seemed to like it no matter what they did or didn't do. That was good. Um, and if they commented in class, they also commented on Salon. And so concluding thoughts, I'm going to use it again for the exact same class. I, I don't have an opportunity to forget. I get to teach the exact same thing this fall. It's wonderful. I hope to learn from my struggles um, to, to uh, get better with the tech. I'm going to try to improve the level of student commentary by being a participant on Salon. I did not comment. I stayed out of it. Um, and until I can get textbook chapters for use with Salon, I won't be able to use it for lower level classes. I really wanted this for an intro site class, putting the chapters up. Um, and spreading the word, I'm going to be talking to my colleagues next week. I would love to have them think about using this for our freshman seminar. I would love to have more people use it for senior seminars. And I think it would be really, really cool for faculty to use it uh, for the things we waste the most time on, get our comments out in front. So thank you very much. Thank you.